So number four, we start with this cube. Okay, and of course, the thing about a cube is that it measures the same on all sides. So if this side's called S, we call this side S and this side S, because they're all the same. And then we a little bit like fives. My S is N to U. The volume they tell us is 216. I think it was centimeters cubed. All right, so we've got here a, a box, a rectangular prism. We've got, put that down. Uh, we've got this kind of a shape. How in general do we find the volume of a shape like this? Um, height times width times depth. Right, so like even if they're all three different uh, values, that's how we would do it. Now, it turns out that when we do that, we multiply an S by an S by an S. We get S to the third power. So S to the third power is equal to 216. So S is equal to the third root mm -hmm. of 216. It's a number that multiplies by itself three times to get you 216. And that number is six. Six because six, right, this is six. Six times six times six is two hundred and sixty. And that's how we know. And fourteen. The third root of 125 is a number that does what? That multiplies itself by three times. And gets 125. Yeah. And you wouldn't have to try it that many times. You're like, one, of course, that's not going to work. Two. No. It gives eight, three. No. Seven, four gives us. Uh, 64. 264. No. It gives us 64. Four times four times four. Yeah. Wait, no. I don't know. Four times four times four is 64. We tried five, five times five is 25, times another five is 125. So it's five. Because five times five times five is 125. Um, so what I'm gonna do today, I want you to, for the review, to take out the little cards like that. Okay, if you don't have yours, raise your hand. What is the fourth root of 81? Three. Three. Why is that? Uh, because three times three times three times three equals 81. Correct. Three times itself four times is 81. And that's what the fourth root of 81 needs to do. It needs to multiply by itself three times, sorry, four times to give you 81. Okay, this next one. Uh, not exactly any number. Ish. Ish. So it is a. It's five point zero six five seven seven nine seven ish. It's a ish because it's never going to stop. It's never going to even have a repeating pattern. All right. That's the way these square roots and cube roots of numbers that don't work out exactly. The decimals just go on forever. They don't even have a repeating pattern. What they call irrational numbers. So it's 5.065797. So let's talk about if you had a calculator, how would you check and see if that was the right answer out of these four choices? Richard? Um, if I had a calculator, I wouldn't have done A. Well, I do. But what I did was I did every, all the other answers to see if those equal 130, and I know 43.3 didn't. Five was too small, and six was too big. OK. Uh, do I need a calculator to just check all these? No, I'm definitely not. Like, in my, without a calculator, I'm not going to multiply this by itself. It is a multiple choice question, though. If I tried five, like Bridger said, it's too small. What does Bridger mean it's too small? 
how do you how can you tell it's too small? Just so happened like that was on the homework question that you asked, right? The third root of 125 is 5. 5 times 5 is 5 is 125. Just a little bit smaller than 130. If we try 6, so think about it, is 6 to the third root? Well, 6 times 6 times 6, also in the homework, was? 256. So close. 16. 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. 4 to the 4th is 256. Uh, so it's got to be a number that's between 5 and 6, right? 5 too small, 6 too big, 5.065797, only number between 5 and 6. And this is right out of the question, 43.3 times itself, 3 times is 130, no way, it's just way too big. Okay. Well done, good job. Can we just, like, can you just give us questions like this on the board? Can we can just give us, or ask? Sometimes I want to see your work. There's not a lot of work for this one. And you just write um, the 130 square root 3. Because what I did was I wrote that and then equals, and then I showed the number multiplied by itself how many times equals that number for the word. That word. Yeah, that's, if I was to show some work, that'd be all the work I could really show. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. So today. Have our notes out, ready to go, right? Sure. So today, we're going to talk about, to start with, actually, I want to use a different number because it got confusing in the other class. 9 to the 1 half power. Since you're getting your notes out, just pay attention. Just a little recap. Uh, so we started our experience with exponents, not in this class, but in previous classes, right? You knew about exponents before you got here. You knew that, for instance, 2 to the third meant 2 times 2 times 2. And that's pretty easy. Like It's, it's like instructions. The number 2 with a 3 up there means multiply 2 by itself 3 times. Okay. So then in this class, we, we looked up to negative exponents. Right? Which, so like 2 to the negative 3 is 1 over 2 to the third. We talked about zero exponent. Right? Like, what's 5 to the 0? 1. To the zero power is always one, it doesn't matter what the number is. If you raise it to the zero power, you get one. The only exception is zero. Zero to the zero power has no definition. One of those things that breaks math. Right. So nine to the one half, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna approach it this way. I'm gonna prove to you that nine to the one half has to be the same as the square root of nine. And if you think about it, this root I could put a two there, this is the two root, the second root, the third root, fourth root. So the second root is what the square root is. I'm going to prove to you that they have to be the same thing. They both have to be three. So the square root of nine is three. Now we know that. We already know that. Why is that? Because it's the half. Three times three equals nine. It's meaning like the half of it. Yeah, it's like the half factor. Half, yeah. Okay. So that's kind of, you know, you can see that. It's like a half factor. But it's not half the number. So it's 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. Because a number times itself gives you 9. OK, so now I'm going to, with this one, I told you that it was 3 and I told you why. Now I'm going to come around kind of backwards and say, this guy right here, it, I should be able to do this. right? And for that, for that reason, the number 9 to the 1 half must be 3. That's what I'm going to prove to you. Okay. Uh, first of all, <coughs> point out a couple of things. Back up and point out uh, like 5 squared times 5 to the 8. What is that? 5 to the 10. And why is that? Because um, <coughs> 5 to the second, that means 2, I mean 5 times 5, and then yeah, those 5 times 5, so the 5 times 5, 8 times, which equals 10 5 times 5. So 10 fives multiplied together. There's two of them. Eight more of them multiplied. You got us just a, a long string of 10. Yeah. Right? So we can add the 2 and the 8 quickly to say that it's 10. Right? Mm -hmm. right. Uh, 7 to the 5th times 7 to the 3rd is 7 to the 8th. Right? It's pretty easy. So there's this property 
like we can explain the property when it comes to like these positive whole number exponents totally makes sense, right? There's two of them, there's eight more, we got 10 of them. Seven, right, five sevens, three more sevens, we got eight sevens, okay? And we notice the fast way to figure out how many sevens there are is there's five of them, three of them, plus add them together, we get eight of them. The thing we're gonna say is, let's assume that that property, adding exponents like that, uh, works all the time. Okay, we've used it with negative exponents, and we're gonna use it with fraction exponents. So, kind of working my way backwards, 9 to the 1 half times 9 to the 1 half. If I add those exponents together, what should I get? 9 to the what? First. A uh, half plus a half mm -hmm. is a 1. A half plus a half is a 1. And what's 9 to the first power? 9. Yeah, anything to the first power is just itself, even 0. negative numbers, anything that you raise to the first power is just itself, so we get nine. So notice what we have here. We have a number times the exact same number, not just some number, but this number times basically itself gives you nine. Is that what I just said about three? Yeah. The square root of nine? Is that three times three is nine? So it's pretty much the same thing. So this number, if there's, these are two identical numbers, those numbers have to be the same thing. And they multiply to 9, so those numbers have to be what? They're um, the same, and they multiply to 9. 3 times 3. It has to be 3 times 3, exactly. So if it was like saying 64 to the half, would that be 8 times 8 equals 64? So 64 to the 1 half would be 8, yeah. So this is also true, for the exact same reasons. Two of these things need to multiply together. If you multiply two of them together, you get nine. So each one of them must be three. Three times three is, is nine. So three must be nine to the one half. Okay, let's look at 64 to the one half. 64 to the one half. Okay, just take another pass at this, proving to you that 64 to the one half has to be the same as the square root of 64. Okay. The, the second root of 64. We already know the, 60, the square root of 64 is 8. And why is that? 8 times itself equals 64. This number times exactly the same number equals 64. Keeping in mind this property that we've established, right? If I multiply two of the same kinds of numbers, like some and some more, I just add how many there are. Mm -hmm. There's 10 of those fives or 8 of those sevens. Using that property, I'm going to say 64 to the 1 half times another 64 to the 1 half. That's going to be 64 to the 1 half plus 1 half power, which again is 1, 64 to the 1 power. And 64 to the 1 power is 1. So we have again a number multiplied by the exact same number is 64. So that number multiplied by itself. What must that number be? 8. Gotta be 8. There's no other number that can multiply by itself. It gives you 64. So, by the same reasoning, the 64 to the 1 half, by this logic, has to be the number 8. Because when I multiply two of the 64 to the 1 halves together, I get a 64. That's exactly what the square root of 64 does. Richard? Um, why would you say 64 to the first if it just equaled 64? Uh, well, I'm just writing it. I rewrote it here without the one because we all know it's just 64. Okay. <coughs> Do we have to have that one? This? Yeah, that little one. No. Okay. This? No. No. I'm just showing you what these add together. They add together to 64 to the first power. So on our homework, are we going to be trying to find the number multiplied by itself with the 64? In our homework, we just want to, we want to be able to in our brain say, oh, 64 to the 1 half, this is, this is squared to 64, so that's 8. Okay. Just kind of like, almost between languages, like just translate. 64 to the 1 half, that's just squared to 64, so I know what that is. Okay. All right. Um, let me use some different logic. I'll just, I'll use these same numbers, and I'll use different logic. Change these both have to be 8 for the exact 
exact same reason. Uh, <coughs> just before that, let me remind you that uh, 5 squared to the fourth power is 5 to the what? 8. Can you explain why? Four. Go ahead, Kyle. Because 5 to the power of 2 four times, four times yeah. would be 5 to the power because there would be four groups, like if I'm gonna write this out, four separate parentheses, right? All identical, the insides are all two fives. Five times 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 five. That's eight fives. So when we raise a power, raise a number to a power, and raise it to another power, well, the new power is just multiply those two powers together, right? Mm -hmm. That's the property that we've used. And so far, for the most part, that's made sense. It's been logical. There's four groups of two fives. That's why there's eight fives, five of the eight. So now let's say we want that property to keep working just because. We just want it to always work. If I raise a power to a power, whether those powers be negatives or, or fractions, like we want it to always work. If it were to work, okay, then uh, using that logic, uh, eight is the square root of 64 because eight squared is 64. I did almost the exact same thing a minute ago, except for instead of writing 8 squared, I wrote 8 times 8. Well, eight, or sorry, 64 to the 1 half. Okay. I'm going to use the same property. I'm going to raise this power to another power. I'm going to raise this number to the second power. Well, that's pretty much what we can, we can either do simplify it out to, you could just, 8 times 8 to 64, or we could just do 8 to that order two. 8 times 8 and yeah. 8 squared are the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so what happens when I, made, when I raise 64 to the 1 half to the second power, I multiply the powers together, right? What's 1 half times 2? One. 1. So again, I, if I square this number, I should get a 64. Well, the only number that I can square to get 64 is 8. Once again, we've shown that it must be 8. So the same lines of reasoning, the square root of 64 and 64 to the 1 half have to be the same thing because they have to multiply by themselves to get this number right here, 64. Okay. So let's talk about 125 to the 1 third power. So that means you just have to multiply. Oh, I get this. So the answer would be five because um, five times five times five because each third is five. Uh -huh. So you have to multiply that three times and then you'll get 125. Right. So we should be able to take this 125 to the one third, whatever number this is. If I take it to the third power, raise it to the one third to the third power, multiply one third by three, mm -hmm. we get. 125. To the um, third power. power. To the first power. Oh, yeah. So if I cube this number, I should get 125. Well, I'm just talking about the cube root then. The words that I'm using to describe this number is, is almost exactly what I would use to describe the cube root of 125. Some number that cubed gives me 125. If I cube this number, it gives me 125. Okay. So it must be that x to the 1 over n power, if I see some number to the 1 over whatever power, like 64 to the 1 half or 125 to the 1 third, that's just the same as what? And, uh, well, basically, it's taking the time that number. Wait. Well, like if you have it on. Um, 125 to the power of third is basically you just have to times that number by the bottom and number. I don't know what one. Um, it's the nth root of something. The nth root of what? X, whatever that number is. Yeah? Let's let's backtrack. Here. 125 to the one third. That's just the third root of 125. 64 to the one half. That's the second root, the square root. 64. The 9 to the 1 half is the square root of 9. Okay. So 
what's like 32 to the one fifth? 32 over five. I mean 32 to the square root of five. I don't know how you say it. A fifth root of 32. Oh, the fifth, okay, I said that backwards. What is the fifth root of 32? Um, Is two? Two times two. Yeah. Times two. It's two. Yeah. Sounds like we've all checked it and it's two. Because two times two times two times two times two is eight. I mean thirty-two. 32 or two to the fifth, which is what I just said, but shorter. Two to the fifth is thirty-two. So thirty-two to the one fifth is the same as the fifth root of thirty-two, which is a number that multiplies by itself five times. They give you thirty-two. That number. One fourth times three? Eight. What are you saying? Well, you, like you, like like you simplify it. You can simplify it. Like yeah, maybe it's 16 one to the one fourth? Yeah. Five is, five is to the third? Yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. I can split it up this way. This is what I highly recommend if you, I mean, you can, you can think of this in your head and, and do it fast, but as you're learning, I would say write it every time when you have a fraction power like that, write it exactly like this. Take your number to the fraction part, just one over, right, whatever, times whatever the numerator is. Because one fourth times three is three fourths. Right? One fourth times three over one, three fourths. And what's 16 to the one fourth mean? 16. The fourth root of 16. Fourth. Four. Remember, fourth root of something means it has to multiply by itself four times. Four times four times four times four is not 16. Two times two times two times two? Yes. Yeah. Or sorry, is 16. So that's two. We're going to raise that number to the third. Eight. That's eight. Whoa. Do you have a question? Oh, no. No? Sorry. That's confusing. Nope. Where did it get confusing? Just from all the numbers and all the different steps you have to do. So if it was, well, can we do something similar to that? Sure. Well, uh, I just got a question. Yeah. Can we just leave it, leave it at sixteen to the power of like sixteen and one fourth? No, the answer is eight. Um, let's say twenty-seven to the five thirds power. To the fifth, which would be if I were to put those together and multiply them, I get that right there. So it's twenty-seven to the one third. Um, the third root of twenty-seven. Third root of twenty-seven. What's the third root of twenty-seven? Three. So it's three to the fifth. I don't know. Three to the two hundred forty-three. Two hundred forty-three. So is what we're doing just bringing the three? So if it was say a four instead of a three, then would we just say twenty-seven to the one fourth uh -huh. parentheses, and then whatever is on top, we multiply it by that. Uh, that much times. Well, the only thing you have to ask yourself is: Is this the same as that? Is twenty-seven to the one third to the fifth the same as twenty-seven to the five thirds? Yeah. Based on everything you know about exponents so far. Yeah, I'm guessing just you're writing it in a different form. Uh, yeah, it's, it is because here, let me give you an example that, that kind of convinces me that it is. That 27 to the 1 third to the 5th is the same. Because like uh, 2 to the 12th. Is that the same as 2 to the 3rd to the 4th? Yeah. Right, 3 times 4 is 12. Well, how do you know 2 to the 3rd to the 4th is the same as 2 to the 12th? Yeah. Four groups of two to the third. Four groups of 
two to the third, right? Two times two times two, you're gonna see that four times. It's gonna be four groups of three twos, that's 12 twos. So we've established there's this property where if I raise a power to a power, I multiply them together. So if I look at this, 27 to the one third to the fifth, I'm gonna say, well, I can multiply them in this case. I wanna, I want to be able to multiply these together, right? Uh, which we've established like, totally works for these fraction exponents. What's one third times five? Five thirds. It's five thirds, Because right? this is five over one. So one third times five over one, which looks like five over seven right now. Five over one. Multiply straight across, you get five thirds. So that's the same. That's the same as that. Is this the same as this? Yeah, because we just said 27 to the one third is the same as the third root of 27. So those are the same. Third root of 27 is three, and three to the fifth is 243. So each step, we just kind of break it down and break it down. Each step we know is the same as the previous. And that's how we get to our final answer. Tyler? Well, all right, so there's one that weapon is the um, Well, here, let's take this step right here. So the third root of 27 to the fifth you can write that as the third root of 27 to the fifth. You don't have to have it in uh, parentheses there. Is it the same as the third root of 27 to the fifth? Or is it not? Like if I take the third root and then take it to the fifth, is it the same as taking this to the fifth and taking the third root? No, because what you're doing in the second one is you're multiplying 27 five times. Yeah. But in the first one, you're first finding what number is times itself three times equals 27 and multiplying that five times by itself. Well, could this perhaps come out to the same thing? Let me take, you know, that's three, and I take it to the fifth power, okay, whatever that is. Or if I take 27, multiply it by itself five times, and then see what number multiplies by itself three times to give me that number, could that maybe be the same number? Right, we found this to be 243. Then the next one is 143, 48907. Oh, so if I were to do this, it would be the third root of what? Um, wait, what? You just did 27 to the fifth, is that right? Yeah, one sec, let me do it again. I think I might have done six times. Two eight six nine seven eight one four. Yeah, that was way too fast. Two eight. Two eight six nine seven eight one four. Okay, so it's a big number. That's in the uh, thousands, million, twenty-eight million plus, right? Mm -hmm. Could the number that multiplies by itself three times to give you twenty-eight million six hundred ninety-seven thousand eight hundred fourteen? Could that number be two hundred forty-three, maybe? 243 might multiply it by itself three times to give you 28,697,814. No, I doesn't. Oh, I think I had it right the first time. One thought. One million. Oh. It's half of it. Half of that number? One million? No. It's one four one four it's three four eight nine oh seven. One four yeah. three four. Three four? One four. Three, one four three, three four, four eight nine oh seven. Okay, so that's the right number. So it's what, 14,348,907. Could the number that multiplies by itself three times to give you that number be 243? Yeah. Does this be? Yeah, I just did it. Yeah. Do we agree? Mm -hmm. 243 times itself three times? Mm -hmm. So it turns out 
these two are the same. <coughs> and I can prove it another way. So let's say I want to take the third root of 27, multiply it by itself five times. Okay, I'll just take this, duplicate it, and again. One more. Okay. So we're multiplying five of these together. And the same is true for third roots as is for square roots. If we have a bunch of roots, we can multiply the insides of the roots together. We get the third root of 27 times 27 times 27 times 27 times 27. And what's 27 times itself five times? 1,000, 1, 000, 4, no. What's the short way of saying 27 times 27 times 27? 27 to the fifth power. Fifth. So we, we did it that way, right? And the number was 243 both ways. Mm -hmm. uh, we did it this way. We showed that we could multiply the insides together like that. It's all the same thing. And if I, as I practice more and more, if I, if I were given this and I were said, no, there should be no one zipping up and packing up, then there's no purpose to it because we have plenty of time left. So oh stop distracting my class with the zips and the zaps. Okay? If I see the third root of 27 to the 5 thirds, stop zipping up your things. The third root of 27 to the 5th without much difficulty, could be rewritten as 27 to the 5 thirds power. If I rewrite this as the third root, or write, rewrite this third root as 27 to the 1 third, multiply 1 third divided by 5, I get 27 to the 5 thirds. So this is what you call rational exponent form. Okay? It's an exponent form already, right? There's no square root symbol, there's no radical. Right. So this is rational exponent form. So rational exponent form. And this is what you call radical form. Whoa. Hello. What was that about? How are you? OK, we're done with that. This is what you call radical form. Why is this called radical form? Remember? Because you can take you can take 27 and zip by five and get there. That's why it's called radical? No. Why is it called radical form? Because they're all the same square root things called radical. That symbol is called the radical. So if I write it with the with the root symbol, the radical symbol, it's called radical form. If I don't write it with a radical symbol, but instead of instead of that all just pure exponents, a rational exponent, rational meaning a fraction number, right? Then it's written in rational exponent form. So when we're asked to go between the two, we know what it all means.